America's war on drugs, addiction, abuse, acceptance, one of the longest standing and most controversial issues facing our nation that people tend to habitually use and lose everything they touch. This week, New York City okaying safe sites for drug use, aiming to curb overdoses. And joining us this morning is the chair of the Columbia University Psychology Department and author, Dr. Carl Hart. And Dr. Hart, this is fascinating. Um, basically, they're saying, don't just say no, just say yes in a place that, where you're going to use drugs and it's going to be safe. Is that a safe way to look at it? Well, I think the framing, your framing is kind of um, inaccurate. You know, the, the thing that we need to understand is that most people who use drugs don't have a problem, don't lose everything. The vast majority, 80% of people who use drugs don't have a problem. But we do have people who do have a problem. Let's just say 20, 30% have a problem. And so in some cases, those people don't have a place to use drugs and they increase the risk, not only to themselves, but the, the risk to society when they do use drugs. For example, they may share needles and pass bloodborne illnesses and things like HIV or hepatitis C or other types of infections that uh, can be transmitted to people who are not engaged in that behavior. So one of the things that supervised injection facilities or supervised consumption facilities do is that it gives people who are without homes, who are without resources, a place to go where they can safely use drugs in a, in, in, under the supervision of medical personnel. So if someone overdoses, someone is there. Uh, so that's a better framing of this issue to help people to kind of understand what's going on. Now, these safe uh, uh, consumption facilities are not the end all. They are primarily for people who don't have homes. And so if you want to solve that problem, you have to fix homelessness. And they never and they do not touch this issue of tainted drugs. So people still run the risk of receiving tainted drugs um, on the illicit market. So if you want to deal with that issue, there are ways to deal with it. Like we can do like the Vancouver people have done. They, they have a safe supply of drugs or, or we can do like other people around the world. Uh, they have facilities where you can submit small samples of your drug and have it tested to make sure it doesn't contain any sort of adulterants. Lest you think I'm a neophyte in, in this, uh, I actually stood face to face with a person in Washington about a block away from Capitol Hill. Uh, he worked for the government accounting office who shot up uh, heroin in a place that they called the Heroin Hotel. Uh, it was a shooting gallery. It was, it was a mess, to tell you the, the truth. But I remember asking him how it felt, and he said it felt humiliating because he was addicted to heroin and didn't want to be addicted, but he needed to be able to get his fix and then go back to work. That being said, these havens that are being set up also carry another problem. What happens when the enterprising reporter stands outside and catches somebody going in and sees that person, for instance, working at the government accounting office and says, you know, you've got a heroin addict working on the nation's budget? Well, you know, what you're describing are extremes, and they are rare because the person you talk to at the Washington Hotel it's like saying, you know, I met this person who had sex with a number of people and didn't care. Uh, of course, there are people I like that in the world, but most people have sex in responsible sort of ways. I mean, and so these extremes are not the way to talk about these issues because that's so adolescent. And we, if we want to, but that's what I'm trying to get to. to. No, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't misinterpret what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. How do we get to the point where we have a responsible? discussion about this without stigmatizing people on one side or the other? Well, we do that by saying, okay, what do these facilities actually do and who do they serve? These facilities, first of all, the, the, the important thing for your viewers to know that these facilities have been in the United States for years, but we've been dishonest. Now, Mayor de, de Blasio, now that he's leaving office, uh, has announced that they are here. But he's known this for much of his time in office that the same facilities that we're saying that are opening, they've been open for years. The same is true in San Francisco. The same is true in other sort of cities in the United States because there have been people on the ground trying to do their best to keep people safe. And this is one way to try to help people without homes, for example, have a place to go where they decrease the risk uh, to us and to themselves. And so these are not 
safe havens. No one, no one wants to go and use their drug in public unless they act absolutely have to. And these people are desperate people. And we can do things to help them be less servant. I mean, less difficult, like provide services, like provide homes, like to make sure that they have game, that they are gainfully employed, like to make sure that they have skills. All of these things we can do. Is there ever going to be a point in time in America where we can see the images coming out of these places that don't offend? I don't know. You know, as long as we are adolescents, you might be offended. Uh, well, but when we grow up, maybe we won't be offended. I mean, it's like saying that uh, is there ever going to be a time that we won't be offended by um, people having sexual intercourse? I, I don't know. Uh, I hope there's a time. I mean, I hope we grow up because uh, being a 55-year-old person in the country, I'm tired of having these adolescent uh, conversations. 